guys, we're going to do our Q&A slash make cookies, so you're not just staring at us talk and answering all of your questions. You have a lot, so we might do a part two also. But this is my guest star, Alex Young, and my husband. So let's get started. We're doing the Toll House cookie recipe, if you feel like baking cookies with us. So the first question, do you have any help? Can you do two cups, two and a quarter cup, please, of flour? Two and a quarter. Do you have any help? Nanny, cleaning lady, what about when Alice goes back to work? So Alice went back to work yesterday. Um, we do not have a nanny or a cleaning lady. Our house is really not that clean. A lot of you guys think it is, it's really not. Um, but yeah, no help, it's just Alice and I, and then when he's at work, it is just me during the day. Me and all the crazy kiddos. What do you do for a living? That's to you, sir. Was this two and a quarter? Just about. It looked like two to me. <laughs> You're lying on screen. Uh, for a living, oh well, for a job, I I do corporate accounting, so just finance, spreadsheets, money, analytics, reporting, that sort of stuff. And then I am a stay-at-home mommy, so we don't pay for any daycare, which helps a lot. But that's my dream job, so I'm super happy. I have the fun job. Next question is, how have the older kids adjusted to the babies? The older kids have adjusted in very different ways. Uh, the two oldest kids, Aubrey and Eli, are nine and five, and they've adjusted really well in being helpful little kids. Sugar, they, Aubrey is... No, that's salt. Sugar. Okay. <laughs> Way too many things going on. <laughs> Aubrey's done a really great job. She's helping out a lot. She's yeah. helping with the bottles. Even helping Eli. With the, helping with the, a little bit with the diapers and just the other stuff going on around the house. So she's been really great. And then uh, the twins are also helping out where they can. Um, Aiden's, she was giving me a hard time. Aiden and Everett are both still pretty young. They're two years old, so not a whole lot has changed in their world. And Asher, is, he's I'm, one years old, so he's, nothing's really changed for him either. But they're, they're everyone's all, done really good though. Yeah, they're doing good with everything we, going on around them. And we always let them help on their terms. It's never like, we need you to change these diapers. We need you to feed these bottles. <laughs> We're the parents, but if they want to help, it's super important that we include them. Sometimes it would just be easier for Alex and I to do it, but inclusion is huge when you are adding a baby to your family, I think. Have you, how do you get any sleep with nine kids? A very... Good wife. <laughs> a very good wife. A very good bedtime routine. So like all of our kids have a solid bedtime routine. Right now everyone's sleeping. It's only, I don't know what time it is because the oven's preheating. Eight o'clock. But yeah, maybe eight o'clock. Um, the babies are just in between care time. They just go on their schedule. We wake them up to eat, but everyone else is in bed by 7.45 unless they're doing a movie night where they stay up late. Yeah. But yeah. So, really good bedtime. Bedtime routine helps a lot. Uh, what will you do when your husband goes back to work? Cry. Stay with me forever. Uh, someone's got to pay the bills. No. So um, we do keep pretty busy though. Yeah, we've been doing good. He's been at work for two days now. I think it's like just a little bit of salt, a pinch of salt. Oh, I need a baby. Um, and we've been doing good. Yesterday we went to Target and just walked around a little bit. Me and the seven younger kiddos, because the oldest two are in school. Today, Asher had a 15 month checkup that we went to, and then we went to the zoo. So it's busy, but it's good. Um, how are Babe, the... we still have to make the cookies. Yeah, that's Can you hand me the butter? Can you hear me the butter? Well, I don't even know what we've added now. Yeah, just throw that in there. Butter, just put it all in there. Uh, God, butter so, no, it helps. How are the babies' temps and eating? Their temps are all really, they're all in acceptable zones. Their yeah, eating is good. all very They're good. eating they're about two ounces. It's not like two ounces every three hours. Sometimes it's a little below, sometimes it's a little over. So on average, I would say two ounces. And Erickson is the only temperature we have to worry about. He is the smallest. And he does have a harder time staying warm, but he's been doing a great job since he's been home. Yeah. And we check a lot, so overly paranoid. How are you managing kids, house, pet, marriage, in that order? In that order, <laughs> marriage is last. I think just that's a, the answer. In that order. <laughs> no, I think just a positive attitude and humor. Lots of humor. There's no one I would rather have this crazy life with than you, babe. Have you ever wanted to homeschool? You didn't even answer, babe. Well, you pretty much something. Well, they want your answer too. How do My you Instagram loves I, you. Can I, have I manage through her. I don't know what I'm doing. I 
I kind of just follow her lead. She's one of the best mothers. Of <laughs> Baking soda. You ask me a question, ask me to do something else. I've got one little track. Wait, my, were you just saying I'm like the best fades. mother ever? I was, and I kind of changed my and mind a little I, bit. And then I got distracted by the Yeah, she's pretty soda. good. She, she leads the way. Have you ever wanted to homeschool? No. Nope. No, thank you. Are you really as calm as you seem? Doesn't seem possible with seven kids, two and under. I think that's at you. At me? We're both pretty calm. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> we have we have hard times for sure, like everyone else. But... Do we need this flour anymore? No, I already did flour. I think we have flour, sugar. Probably. I think we've done all that. I think it's just eggs and chocolate chips, hopefully. But that doesn't look like a lot of ingredients. Yeah, it'll work. You're going to hand mix it? Go you, babe. Um, we're pretty chill. We just have a calm approach to things. We're obviously, our house gets loud and we get overwhelmed. Everyone's only human, but we just try our best to reason with our kids and understand where they're coming from. And that gives us a better perspective. Just like any human on the planet, there's a balance to things. It's not perfect calmness all the time. It's just trying to manage the ups and downs. You might be able to hear some baby grunting in the background. Yeah, there's four. There's quads right there. There's four the right there. They're all sleeping though. How did you two meet? High school. I saw school. Alex cross the gym and I was like, wow, he's really sexy. And I'm not joking. That's literally how it went. Then my friend got his name and I messaged him on Facebook. And I said, or no, I added him on Facebook. And then he messages me and said, do I know you? And I was like, and the rest is ancient history. No. But then we started talking and here we are today. Ten years and nine kids later. What are all your kids' names, ages, in the AE pattern? I got this. You're missing eggs, though, so it might not be yeah, creamy. Yeah, it probably looks still super powdery. Two eggs, babe. Um, we have Aubrey, who is nine. We have Elijah, who is five. We have the twins, Aiden and Everett, who are going to be three next month. Then we have Asher Baby, who is 15 months. Then we have the quads, who will be two months in a couple days. And they are... I was going to start with Aurora, but that's out of order. <laughs> Edwin, Aurora, Erickson, Arlo. And our AE pattern. So when we got pregnant with Aubrey, we just loved the name Aubrey. When we got pregnant with Eli, we just loved the name Eli. Then we unfortunately had a miscarriage. Then when we got pregnant again, it was with the twins. And everyone was like, you guys have this AE pattern going on. Because he's Alex and I'm technically Elena. So it was AE, AE. And we're like, okay, so we, we just kept it going. It wasn't something we initially planned. Initially, 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 initially planned, but we just stayed with it. So tell us the hardest part of the NICU. Everything. The NICU is not a fun place to be. The NICU is a real challenge to see other small. Yeah, it's not even babies. like just your kids that you feel for. It's just being in a room full of all these super tiny babies that are literally fighting for their lives. It's not fun to witness. One of the nights I was there, one of the babies had stopped breathing. Not one of our kids, but there was all these red alarms going off around me. And all of the nurses rushed over into that room and the nurse was screaming help. And it's just a very overwhelming place to be. But it, it is one of the best... So, places. Uh, uh, it's yes, something that for it, sure. it's a real great benefit to have something like the NICU. It's just, like she said, it's just not one of the easiest places to be because there's so much hard times going on there. Yeah. But it's. But the present. staff was amazing, and we're so thankful for all the medical advances we have today because obviously many years ago our babies would not have made it. So it's a remarkable place, but it's also just not a fun place to be. How do you find time for makeup and hair? That one's directed towards you. Your makeup is done today. My makeup's always done, babe. Um, I usually do my makeup while I'm pumping. And my hair, this is just air dried after the shower. Nothing special. Sometimes I throw in some curls to give it some body because I feel like it's really thin since having the babies. But it only takes me a couple minutes because it is so thin. So really it's like 10 minute hair and makeup. So I just sneak it in there somewhere. Today, for instance, I was doing my makeup on the couch while I was pumping and Asher was throwing all the everything else in my makeup bag into our playroom. So it's not always like a smooth process, but I can get it done. Uh, how many siblings do, or, or where do yours, where do, where does your families live? Everywhere. Our moms live in Florida. Both of our moms live in Florida. Um, my dad's in Minnesota. We have sisters and his sisters in Indiana, Idaho. Minnesota or Wisconsin they're just everywhere no one's in New York besides Alex's 
dad, grandma, and a couple of aunts and cousins. So we're very fortunate to have his dad and their uncles, yes. Very fortunate to have his dad, Opa. He's amazing. But as far as like nanny type help, he has a Monday through Friday job also. So. How was recovery then? Very good. Like, <laughs> like a week later, I took all the kids to the movie theater because they were on Christmas break. Yeah, I'm not a good person to watch as far as a C-section recovery because I don't follow all the rules. I just can't lay in bed for like three weeks. I was feeling good and I got up and moving, but there were days where I didn't feel good and I definitely laid in bed. So I would say just base your recovery off how you're feeling that day. Obviously every single person recovers differently. Uh, what was your reaction to finding out about the quads? Lots of crying. <laughs> Not necessarily in a bad way, but in an, a very overwhelmed way. Yeah, Obviously, it wasn't something we planned. Was... We planned the pregnancy, but we didn't plan the quad part. So it was overwhelming. Yeah, just overwhelming. Um, but very thankful now. And if I could go back in time, I would just give Alice and I a big hug and tell them, tell our past selves, it's going to be okay. Don't spend all this time worrying about every scenario because it's beautiful. How do you manage lack of sleep? Well, when you got all these kids, especially the quads being you know, very you know, the premature, they have a lot of needs all throughout the day and night. You've got to be pretty deliberate with how you're planning your day and when you're going to sleep and how you're managing your time between your spouse. And I think that's really what it comes down to. Just manage your time with your spouse and to your team. And yeah, forget all the kids you had and only focus on your spouse. Exactly. No. How many, um, how many hours really of sleep? Really quick, babe. That's a serious question they want to answer. The babies, they, I would say in every, like a three hour window, they're up for an hour between diaper changes, eating, stuff like that. So for every three hours, they're sleeping two hours. So during the night, it's really not that bad because if they eat at nine, they'll be eating from like nine to 10. Not that they eat an hour, but like that's their getting stuff done. Then they sleep the next two hours. So really you can still get like six to seven hours of sleep a night from like 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. It, but I'm up more because I'm pumping throughout the night. Usually after they eat, I pump. Um, but yeah, we're doing okay. And all of our other kids, they nap. The oldest two are in school. So if I wanted to, I usually don't. But if I wanted to, I could take a nap during the day. How do you? How many hours of sleep do you get in 24 hours? I would say six hours. Just about. How are you both doing? Has your marriage changed since the quads have come home? I just have... I'm, I wouldn't say change, but like when you bring a child home or children, you just see your spouse in a different light, especially when it's like your first child. You just have so much more appreciation for them and what they're doing. Alice is a very hands-on dad. Obviously, he goes to work Monday through Friday, so technically it could be said that I do more. But when he's home, he's very hands-on and very helpful, so very thankful for you. I think you hit it. You just it's plans tonight. Your yeah, you just see them in a different light, and in a way, you love them more because you're just like, wow, you rock. Uh, picture of all your nine kids? Question mark. I haven't posted one yet because we were all sick last week. Erickson came home, and then literally a stomach bug hit our whole house and got everyone but the babies. But we have family photos Sunday. Alex is so excited. He's like, what outfits are we wearing? I cannot wait to spend hours photographing nine kids and our dog. It's going to be such a blast, and <laughs> I'm just kidding. Courtney said there's no room for Bronx Good. in the photo shoot, so our dog unfortunately won't be able to go because there's just not room in her camera lens for everyone, but he'll be coming to our fall family photos. I did ask about him, though. Did your husband take time off for, for paternity leave? Yeah, I think I yeah. covered that quickly. He took four and a half weeks altogether, two weeks after delivery, then he went back to work, and then when the babies came home from the NICU, another two and a half weeks. And it was really helpful. How do you manage to? How do you manage you to pay for everything? Oh, you already added chocolate chips. Everything is good. It's good to go. How do you manage to pay for everything? It's kind of like I, uh, looking. Is this how cookie dough is supposed to look? I think so. It you looks, just roll it up in a ball and throw it in the oven. But it looks super bada sticky. Bada 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 I don't think it says. That's how it goes. Bada bing, bada boom. So how do we manage to afford this? Um, Life. I'm actually from. Uh, Ancient Indian royalty. I was gonna say, what? Are, where are you going? A couple with of this? palaces back in Agrabah. It's, you do? Are you aware? Money isn't really a concern for us. He's obviously completely joking. Managing it on one income, it's. I've, well, well first probably, of all, Alex makes a good living. He's a corporate accountant. He worked very hard to get where he 
where he is so we do make a comfortable living i say we because i feel like i should be getting some it's compensation that's what they tell me anyway yes um we we make we we're smart with our money yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm treated pretty fairly where i work i've been there for four years and it's been really great for me um but on the other side we're pretty good at managing our money and just making things fall where they need to i say we there as a bit of a stretch i think yeah, i'm pretty I'm good at keeping her in line is really how it pans out money. So the birth story vlog. I have a treat yourself mentality and a YOLO. You only live once. So. Not a good comment. Doesn't go good when you're trying to budget. I think the birth story vlog is something that may yes. come out in the future. We it's... have it recorded. We recorded our actual C-section, but that's going to be a very special video. So I just want to be more comfortable with editing and stuff before I uh, post that video. But we didn't know the gender, so it was super awesome that they let us record it. It's not of c-section stuff it's pretty much just alex and i's face but you can hear the doctor saying like okay baby a is a boy and baby b is a girl and everything like that and everyone the whole room was filled with doctors and nurses but everyone was super supportive and really calm they probably thought that we were secretly freaking out which we were but like i mean i've delivered multiple times now and these were like the calmest this was like the calmest atmosphere for our delivery, I'd say. And you would think it would be not that way because there's four babies that are premature, but it was a really good experience. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. It will be coming soon. Just be a little patient with me. So the proposal story, it's not too terribly glamorous. I'm not a very glamorous guy. Oh my gosh. So, so essentially, I had been- Last night he brought me home 15 cookies and a cake just because. And last week he brought me home a box of chocolates and said, you're amazing. And just because flowers. Well, it was Valentine's Day, so. Valentine's Day was two days ago, babe. Way to try to make yourself not right. romantic. Uh, it's the romantic. proposal story. I, you know, back when I proposed to Lena, we really didn't have almost any money at all. So it wasn't like something that I could do some lavish thing. And we did have the kids, and you know, so it was a different lifestyle at that point. But I, so the he proposal was still story in college. Itself. He was still in college, going to school full time. I was working part time. We had our kids, so yeah, it wasn't like. Ooh, I don't know uh, how to say. For the preface. Willing to spend all that money on so that type we, of thing. So I, I, I don't know. I was spending the entire afternoon putting up lights on the set. It was Christmas time when I proposed. So I was putting Christmas decorations outside. Uh, I had my toolbox outside with me with some flowers in it. I brought her outside to take a look at the lights. I plugged them in, let there be light, and then uh, she turned around and I was on one knee. And, and I had Aubrey with me, and he had gotten flowers, and he proposed. And, and here she we said are. Yes. So what were you, what, what were the what? babies born at and what are they now? Okay, this is gonna take me a minute, but I got this. Can you roll cookies while I got this? Roll cookies? Roll or oh, ball. ball cookies. Okay, so Edwin was born at three pounds, 10 ounces. They all got weighed yesterday. So these are weights as far as yesterday, like seven weeks later. So three pounds, 10 ounces, Edwin was born at, and he, yesterday he weighed five pounds, five ounces. Aurora was born at three pounds, eight ounces. Yesterday, she weighed five pounds, nine ounces, technically nine and a half. Um, Erickson was born at two pounds, 15 ounces. Yesterday, he was four pounds, 11 ounces. And Arlo is the big boy now. He was born three pounds, eight ounces, same as Aurora and he weighs five pounds 15 ounces so hopefully tomorrow when they get weighed he's hit that six pound marker but yes i had all that memorized how did you get I the babies the out of the NICU so quickly so quickly so the we were told right after we delivered they came at 29 weeks four days that the earliest the babies can come home is 35 weeks gestational age um, Arlo came home at 35 and a half weeks and Aurora and Edwin came home at 36 weeks and Erickson 36 and a half weeks. So they were all home before 37 weeks, which is super amazing. All the NICU staff, staff kept telling us how remarkable they were doing. Um, but every baby develops at their own pace. Our son was full term and he had to go to the NICU for a week and he weighed 11 pounds at birth. He was just a big boy. So there's no like secret to it. Just try your best. Um, go everything is at the baby's pace and the best advice I have is that babies are or premature babies are very unreliable They like to prank you. So all of our babies except Arlo filled their open crib at least three times 
So they come out and you're like, oh my goodness, they're in an open crib. Next step is home. And they're like, just kidding, back in our isolate. So just take each day as it comes. Try not to get discouraged, it's easy to. But there's no secret. I don't know where you left off. Da, da, da. How do you go grocery shopping we before groceries? usually don't. We do Walmart grocery pickup and it's the best thing ever. They bring it right out to your car. There's no fees or anything like that. And I feel like Walmart has the most affordable groceries also compared to Tops and Wegmans near us. Um, but yeah. And how do you afford groceries? You need groceries. So that's an budget. easy thing. Yeah, budget. But that's like an easy thing to spend money on. Sometimes I might hesitate to get my nails done or something like that, but you need food, so there's Sometimes. no hesitation. You thought about hesitating Sometimes. once in your life. All right, any of the babies identical? No, they're not. No, each baby is their own, and they all look super different. I don't know if that's another question on here, but that was asked. How yeah, do you, you tell, tell them the apart? Are. They all look so different. Arlo has a huge chin dimple, literally like a line <laughs> through his chin. Um, my dad has that. Erickson is obviously much smaller, but he's kind of, he has lighter hair. The other three have dark brown hair. Um, Aurora has really chipmunk chubby cheeks. So is Edwin. I know, but like hers are chubbier. And then Edwin has like a double, like a triple chin. Like his chunk is in his chin. Aurora's is in her cheeks. Arlo has his chin dimple. And Erickson has lighter hair and he's just obviously much smaller than the other ones. And for anyone who wants to know why, they're just... They're their individual people, and they just grew differently. Um, did we do IUI or IVF? We did not do either of those. We have not for any of our kids, and we are sending prayers to anyone on either of those journeys. You and yourself are a, ro are a warrior. What, uh, what? What are the stickers on your mask? Oh, on our hospital mask. Yeah, a lot of people wanted to know that. So every night we went into the hospital, even if you're wearing a mask, they give you a new one and you have to wear that one while you're at the hospital. So that was just their way of marking that you are wearing the new mask and they change the stickers every day. Let me see those bald cookies. These look extra gooey, babe. Yeah, they don't look very good. They don't, I mean, they look good, but I have faith. We, we're gonna cook them and they're gonna be fine. What does it mean when you say going to the zoo? Do you wanna answer? Oh, it can be many things. Like zoo, going to the zoo could no, mean coming home. No, they're talking about the NICU. So, oh, all right. Like so, that sign outside, it says, like when they called and Arlo had officially been officially been discharged, they said Arlo's going to the zoo. And that means he is leaving the NICU. He's breaking free. They have this like, I don't even know what it's called. What it would be called? Just a little board. Like, well, it's like a huge like plastic curtain in a way. And it's like a zoo. And it says going to the zoo. And you can fill out when they were born, their weights, everything like that. And it's like a discharge tradition, I guess you could say. Was it harder leaving four babies in the NICU or just one? For it was definitely me, harder to leave one. One, yeah. I talked about that with my mom when she was here last weekend. Like, I feel like I, it would be harder to leave four. And saying it sounds really weird. But when I left all four there, when we left all four there, they had each other, they weren't alone. And I don't know, it was just like the young group, the young clan. And we had like our own little corner in the NICU that was like our little penthouse suite. And then when we discharged the three babies, um, it was just Erickson. Like we went in there and it wasn't like, I'm here to see the young quads. I'm here to see Erickson young. Mm -hmm. And it was harder because he was just by himself. And he was now in a nursery with all these stranger babies. Not that he notices, but it was harder on my heart, definitely leaving just one baby there versus all four of them. And even at home, like I felt so guilty doing anything with the three babies at home. Cause I'm like, the quad squad is not the quad squad right now. Like Erickson's still not here. And what is your favorite thing about each other? My favorite thing about you. My butt, let's be <laughs> real. <laughs> My favorite thing about you is the way that you handle everything going on in our life. Our life is crazy almost all the time. I've got a cookie all over my ass. That's okay. You said it. <laughs> now you've got it all everywhere. Well, you don't have to get everywhere, babe. Uh, but you're a fantastic mother and you're very conscientious of the people around you. You're respectful and you. sweet. That's I'm my sweet. favorite thing. That was gonna be kind of like my favorite thing. So now That's it's just gonna sound like first. I copied you. So you always go the first. thing about Alex Young is he, this guy right here, Alex Young, this is Alex Young. Yeah, they know who he I am. is 
just. I don't know <laughs> Think of uh, let say. me think of something. Okay, no, genuinely, Alex is just without a doubt the kindest person I've ever met. Like he would give a complete stranger, uh, the, how's the saying go? Like a jacket off your back, right? The clothes off your the back. The clothes off your back. Yeah. Like Alex is so kind to every single person he meets to the point where it gets a little frustrating. Because if someone messes up my order, I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, this is annoying. And he's like, let's look at it from their perspective. I'm not like a kumbaya guy, no. but I'm certainly pretty reasonable. He, that's the best word. He's reasonable, which just makes him kind to literally everyone. Like, nobody in the world frustrates him. Obviously, people do, but... You, you sound like you're getting frustrated. No! <laughs> I am a little... Fr I'm intimidated by your perfection. He's just so kind, like, literally to everyone. <laughs> Babe, stop. you keep laughing and you're making my answer sound silly. I, okay, I'm starting over. My favorite thing about Alex Young is that he is a very kind individual. He Good. is not <laughs> judgmental and he literally strives for perfection. <laughs> He's just a wonderful human being. And well, top notch husband and dad. And he is fun. What car holds everyone? We drive a Ford Transit. It seats 12. So there is one spare seat the back row of four can come out which is super awesome because when alice and i go on a date night you know like once every 10 years we can go to the drive-in and you can literally put a whole mattress in the back when you take out the back row so it's super roomy it's a it's an airport passenger shuttle it's yeah gigantic. it's huge it's a big four transit but it's awesome um the pet peeve of one another i wasn't ready for this one um alex leaves his socks <laughs> <laughs> alex is Soul is perfect, but he leaves his socks everywhere and it does drive me crazy sometimes. He tucks them into the couch cushion, which makes no, no I don't. Yes, I you do, this. babe. I'll like be like fixing the couch cushion because I like vacuumed or something. I'm like, oh, two male adult socks. There's it's only certainly one. certainly easier than putting them in the laundry. There's, oh, so you are admitting that you do tuck them I'm not them saying in. that I do, but I could see why I would. Bless you, baby. I heard baby sneezes. Oh, it was that one. Um, yeah, so he leaves his socks everywhere. Another thing that annoys me, I love you very much. He leaves empty containers. They only ask for he one He leaves thing. empty containers. So like I'll go in the freezer and I'm like, wow, French toast sticks sound really good right now. And I'm like so excited. I grab this box and I like pull it out and I'm like, <gasps> and it's empty. And I'm like, Alex Young. We're getting pretty real on this one. So my pet peeve of her is... I would say doing laundry and dishes, she has a very similar <laughs> habit where she won't fully unload the prior load, she'll just reload That's the new true. load. So you'll have like a triple load of laundry in the dryer because she doesn't want to take it out to fold it. I'm and just dishes, refreshing it. You'll open the dishwasher and they're just pouring out on you because she's just loaded more dirty dishes and hit restart on it. So I'm like I go to put the dishes away and I'm like, wow, I'm really got, I'm really good. I'm like putting dishes away and then I'm like, okay, I'm tired of this. And then I just load the rest of the dishes, but I keep all those clean ones in there. I'm like, they'll just be extra clean. It's fine. That's it's really fine. great. What is your favorite physical trait of one another? Alex, I like his height. He's very tall. I'm kind of a taller female, not the tallest one in the world, but definitely taller. So when I can just hug him and feel small and secure, it's a really nice feeling. Physical trait. I'm and your doing. beard. Uh, okay. The, uh... Oh, to... great. Nothing. <laughs> no physical it? trait. Well... You have to think about this one. Your smile is mm -hmm. one of the most gripping things. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I can notice you almost anywhere but just based on your smile. You've got dimples that are beautiful and... I'm not falling. Captivating. They are. <laughs> we all know nothing. You don't have a physical trait. You're a very beautiful woman. Thanks, babe. But yes, those are all the questions we have for today. We have totally failed at making cookies. I will let you know how they come out on my Instagram story. If you're not following, it's Raising Our Youngs. I'm way more active on there. But yeah, we'll have a question Q&A part two, probably I later next week. A lot of these questions can probably get broken out into a lot more detail, um, potentially in a future video. But He's still trying to recover his favorite physical appearance question yeah, we can pick up some pieces there for sure um but um i didn't answer any breastfeeding questions i'm going to do a whole separate vlog about that i've had a lot of breastfeeding slash pumping for quad questions so that will be coming in the next couple of days right now all four babies are getting breast milk and we'll see how long it goes for
Found it. But you, really, you have one more time to answer. What's your favorite physical trait about me? Your butt. My butt? Okay. <laughs>